Hi, uh, so I'm here with another video about things that come up when you've got arrays of objects and those objects are things that you're drawing on the screen. So the topic for this video is looking at collision detection, dealing with collisions. Now I should emphasize there's two things at play here. There's collision detection, meaning are those two circles overlapping, which they are right now, and then there's collision resolution, meaning what do you do when the two things are overlapping? Do they bounce off of each other? And I'm going to really be staying away from the physics side of this. I'm just going to, when they overlap, have them change color. When they don't overlap, have them not change color. But uh, the reason why this is so useful is, you know, it's, it's not going to be too hard for us to do this with two objects, but ultimately you might have a system where every object in the system is checking itself against every other object. And I have an example of this. This is from uh, a set of examples called uh, From the Nature of Code. This is agent modeling. All of these agents are moving around the screen and they obey one simple rule, don't bump into your neighbor. So every single one of these has to check the position of every single other one and move out of the way if they're too close. So I'm going to start small with these two objects, then build a scenario with lots of objects and look at how, what we, how we can make something happen based on the, the, how far apart those objects are. So let's first, um, I think a diagram here would be helpful just to sort of look at first, how do you determine, there you are, I mean, you're, it's a camera looking at me, but um, how do I determine, how do you determine if two objects, two circles are overlapping or not? So in a previous video I looked at how do you know if a point is inside a circle? This is actually quite a similar thing. So if I have circle A and I have circle B and I have circle A and I have circle B, you can plainly see that these two circles are overlapping and these two circles are not overlapping. So obviously to a human being, visually it's quite obvious. So how do you determine that with code? Well, the, there's only two key pieces of information that you need. You need to know, you know, X A, Y A, X B, Y B. You need to know where is the center of each of these circles and then you need to know how far apart are they? What is that distance between them? Because if the distance between them is greater than the sum of the two radii, here's a radius, here's a radius, this radius plus that radius is only like a line about that long, you can see the distance is greater than that, it means they aren't overlapping. If that distance, right, you can see here, is shorter than the sum of these two radii, you can see that it is because this radius goes all the way to here, this radius goes all the way to here. If it's less than the sum of those two radii, then they are in fact overlapping. So what we need is a way of calculating the distance between, um, uh, uh, the, oh sorry, ah, I lost my train of thought there for a second. What we need is a variable to store the distance using the P5 distance function that I previously referenced between you know, xA, yA, xB, yb. Now this, I, this, uh, this is sort of like math notation. I'm mixing it with kind of like code, but we'll name our variables in a different way in the actual thing. If that distance is less than, you know, ra plus rb. I wanted to make an Arby's joke here, but that's just because I watch too much daily show. <laughs> I'll skip that. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, if the distance is less than RA plus RB, then those two circles are in fact overlapping. Okay, so this is the algorithm that you need. I, I'm kind of losing my steam here and try to get some energy going. Um, and now what I want to do is look at, so at least very first, how do I put this algorithm in code? So one thing that I've done here with this particular example is I've simplified for a bit. So starting out this idea, I think it's easier for us to look at not at an array of objects, but instead simply just two objects. So you can see I have object B1 and object P2. Here's a bubble, there's a bubble, update both of them, display both of them. So what do I want to look at first? I want to look at the distance between both of those objects. So how do I do that? I could say give me the distance between what? B1x, B1's y, and B2's x, and B2's y. Now another thing that I did is I've added a variable for radius. R, meaning this circle, this bubble's radius, it's 48. Now remember, the ellipse function expects a diameter. So in the ellipse function here, you can see, excuse me, I'm multiplying radius by two. So if I'm going to use this concept of a radius in a math calculation, that's something to do with geometry, I better be consistent about what I'm doing. So radius is 48, the size of it is 48 times two. So now that I have that, I can say, 
If the distance is less than, and let me give, let me add some carriage returns here just so I can kind of look at this. If the distance is less than b1 dot r plus b2 dot r, then now do something. What do I want to do? Maybe I'll say b1 dot change color and b2 dot change color. Right? So this is the central idea. Um, first, all I want to do is check the distance. What's the distance between this object's x and that object's x? Based on that distance, if it's less than their two radiuses, they're intersecting, do something to them. If it's greater than, don't do anything, right? There's nothing in the else situation here. So let's look at how, now what does this mean? I just made up b1.changeColor. Does, does the bubble just automatically change its color because I say change color? No, this is something I made up. I need to add that function to the object itself. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna add a function called change color is a new function. Now, of course, I did this in a previous video, but I kind of like lost it because I started over. <clears throat> I should add a variable for color, right? So uh, let's give it a color to start, just white. And then when I want to change its color, let me make a new random color. And I'll just do three random values. And you can be more creative with this and something that you actually change its size or something else. But you can see here now, all I'm doing is adding some functionality to the object. The object has a display function. It draws it as an update function, which moves its x and y. Now it has a change color function, which gives a new random color to the object. And when am I changing its color? Only if it's intersecting, right? Now notice, by the way, if I comment all of this out, let me zoom back out here, and only call the change color function uh, in draw, as I might, and I have all these extra carriage returns, I can put those back, right? So now I'm just always calling change color. We can just make sure that feature even works. Okay, so that feature didn't work. Why well, didn't work? Oh my God, I think I made the classic blunder, which I, I really should have done this on purpose, but I actually didn't do this on purpose. Like I added this dot color, and then I added change the color, why it's not changing. So this happens all the time in programming. You think like, just because you put some stuff in there, stuff should happen, but I forgot a really crucial step. Uh, uh, and let's just cancel that, right? I added a color variable. I even changed that color variable over and over again, but look what's happening here. The fill, it's 255. If you don't use, again, if the tree falls in the forest and there's nobody there, whatever that is, if the variable is initialized, but you don't use it, does it, does it make a sound? It doesn't change the color, that's for sure. So what I really need to make sure I do is add this dot color here. So if you're going to add a new variable, you better use that variable for what you intended to use it. And I made that mistake and I forgot it. So it's good that we check to see if that feature would even work first before we tried doing the intersection. So now if I run this, you can see they're just changing color like crazy. Now randomly, if they would just spread apart a little bit, come on randomness, now look at that. Nah. Oh, wait, of course, they're doing it all the time. I forgot. So I, I forgot. I was just testing to see if they would change their color. I don't have that if statement in there yet. So we can see that feature works. So let's go back to the sketch. And now let's add in distance. Let's add in this if statement. And let's see what's going on here. Now they're not intersecting, so they're not changing color. Now come on, randomness. Come on, randomness. I gotta like time lapse this video. Okay. Oh, they're so close. Oh, please. Please, please do this for me, oh gods of computing random numbers. I think I'm gonna have to just refresh, get some new random numbers here. There we go, okay. So you can see when they're touching, they're flickering and flashing, and now above, hopefully they'll randomly spread apart at some point, and you can see that they stop changing color. So this works. Now, once again, so, so, so we kind of have the basic idea here. We know we can check the distance between these two objects, and we can do something based on that distance. So it could be map a force, you know, push them apart if they're close, pull them together if they're far. You know, this, this is a whole other set of videos that we need to make about how to do that, but at least we're seeing the basic idea. There's two things that I think that could be done better here. Number one, I think that we could take this idea of checking the distance between two bubble objects and put that into a function inside the object itself. Again, this idea of object-oriented programming, like out here, I don't want to mess with the wiring of the car. There's no car. But car is often the thing people use to talk about, object-oriented programming, right? This, I just want to say something really nice, like if B1 intersects B2, then change their color, right? All of this distance calculation and all of that, 
that's something that really should be inside of this intersects function. I should add a new function to the object that can check if it's intersecting another object. The reason why I want to add that is I might have a lot of objects I want to check intersection with a lot of other objects. I want the object's functionality to be inside the object. And conceptually, an object should be able to know, is it intersecting with another object? It's not happening out here in the main program. It's called out here in the main program. But the algorithm itself happens in the object. So I think this is good practice. I mean, whatever, you do whatever you want with your code. I don't believe in that good practice nonsense. But I think this will help and be an interesting thing to look at at least. So first I want to look at how do we do that. So that's step one. Step two is once we're doing it with just these two objects, how do I do it with 100 objects? So uh, I've already been going on for 10 minutes. I've kind of got the, got the like, lay of the land here. But I'm going to try to push through these last two steps in this video. So first, let's think about what this means. So this is particularly tricky. So I think I'm going to go over the whiteboard for a second. Like, if I say b1.intersects b2, what does that mean? Like, what am I actually needing to write? So let me erase this. And uh, I will say, I said in the code, if b1 dot intersects b2. So what does this mean? Intersects, and I made it with an s, is a function that you can call on a bubble object. That means in my bubble constructor, I need to write a new function called intersects. This dot intersects equals function. Now, notice how I'm passing into that function an argument. What is that argument? It's another bubble object. So I need to send that value into the function. So the function definition now requires a parameter. What is that parameter? Some other bubble. So I could call that parameter other. So the nice thing about this is this should be a generic function that can test if this particular object intersects any other object. So I could say if b1 intersects b2, or if b5 intersects b7, or if b9 intersects b27, right? And this can be executed with any two objects, and, th and the function is generic. This object checking the other object. And what does this function need to do? It needs to return true, or it needs to return false based on what? The distance between this object and the other object. Okay, so this is the idea that I'm trying to now, that I now would like to go implement. I really want to stop and ask, see if you have any questions, but I can't. Okay, so here I'm over here, and uh, so I'm going to take, this is the kind of like, we know this is what works. So I'm going to just comment this out though, and come back over to the bubble, right? I need to add that intersects function to the bubble object. So here we go, and I'm going to say this dot intersects equals a function with a parameter other, right? So this function should check if this xy, the distance between this xy and the other xy. It's a general function for, for all the objects can check if they themselves, this, intersects with another. So I want to get the distance between this dot x, this dot y, and other dot x, and other dot y, right? This object is the object here that's being made. The other object is the one that's being passed in. And if that distance is less than this object's r plus the other object's r, right, then they are intersecting. right? This is that algorithm we worked out. If the distance between the two objects is less than the sum of the radii of the two objects, yes, they are intersecting, so return true. Return true, otherwise return false. This is very similar to what we did when we had a function in the object check if the mouse was being clicked on that object. We were comparing the distance between this object's x and mouse x, mouse y. Now we're checking the distance between this object's x, y and the other object's x, y, returning true or false based on the, the, those radiuses. So if I come back over here, I now don't need this anymore. And look at this program is like just like the most lovely little thing. It's just like two objects, make the objects, update, display them. And look at this. It almost reads like English. If b1 intersects b2, b1 should change its color, b2 should change its color. Notice how everything is really in the object. 
So this is kind of the magic of object-oriented programming. You just have kind of like the macro view of what the program's doing here, and the guts of it are in the object. So if I want to change what it does, I just change this change color function. If I want to change how the intersect test works, I change that intersect function. If I want to change how it updates itself, I change that function. We've got a really modular and reusable program. So let's make sure this still works. And you can see they're white, they're white, now they're intersecting, so they're flickering. And when they go apart, they don't flicker anymore, that sort of thing. Okay, boy, are we trucking along here at 15 minutes. So we really got far. But I think I just gotta, like, I should just wait to go to the next video, but I'm just gonna go right now. So the next thing that I wanna do is change this from only two objects to an array of objects. And this is not the easiest thing in the world. So what I wanna do here is. Uh, stop, you, stop, you know what I'm gonna do now? Yeah, I'm gonna do this in the next video. <laughs> I changed my mind. Because this is a good point to stop, because if you're, if you're like working with this, I, I would suggest setting this up first with just two objects. So get this sort of same thing working for yourself. Maybe do something besides change color, change size, uh, play around with what this intersect test means. Like, are you at, could you like do if they just get kind of near each other? Like what, you know, what, what strangely shaped thing might you have? So try to get this working in the next video. I'm gonna make this another video. I'm gonna change it from just two objects to an array. Okay, and stop.